It's ten below zero out here. The wind cuts straight through you. No furnace. No glass windows. No insulated walls. Yet whole families slept inside this earth lodge. And they slept warm. How did they pull that off? This wasn't luck. It was engineering. The thick earthen walls acted as thermal mass, trapping daytime heat, the same way concrete does in a passive house today. The doorway was low-cutting the draft, just like we try to do in a modern cold sink shelter. Inside, beds were raised off the ground because if you've ever camped in a canvas tent, you know the cold creeps up from the dirt first. They layered insulation with grass and hides the same way you'd stack a modern sleeping bag system. Even the smoke hole managed airflow so heat stayed in, smoke went out. Ancient survival wisdom, smarter than most fireplaces we use now. The Earth Lodge was the winter stronghold of tribes like the Mandan Hidatsa and Arakara, right in the heart of the northern plains. These weren't flimsy shelters. An earth lodge could stretch 40 feet across, with walls several feet thick, packed with timber grass and layers of soil. That combination gave the structure enormous thermal mass, the same principle that keeps a passive house warm today, without burning much fuel. Step inside and you'll notice something different from the teepee. The tippy was quick to set up easy to move with the hunt, but it relied on constant fire and draft control. The earth lodge, on the other hand, was a permanent fortress. Heavy roof beams carried layers of grass and dirt for insulation layering. Raised sleeping platforms circled the fire pit, keeping families off the frozen ground. The design managed airflow and smoke management with precision. Think of it as the original passive house built from nothing but timber grass and dirt, yet warm enough to outlast the fiercest blizzards. Hack number one is the thermal mass of those thick earthen walls. Outside it could be minus 10, minus 20, sometimes worse. Yet inside the earth itself acted like a giant storage battery for heat. During the day the walls absorbed warmth from the central fire and from the sun striking the surface. At night, when temperatures dropped, that stored heat radiated back into the living space. It's the same principle that modern engineers call thermal mass, the same trick concrete and masonry use in passive houses today. Except here, it was done with nothing but timber grass and soil. Think about it. A wall two to three feet thick is not just blocking the wind, it's slowing the rate of heat loss. In bushcraft, we call that insulation layering stacking natural materials to trap warmth. The tribes were doing this on a massive scale. If you've ever tried to sleep in a thin canvas tent on frozen ground, you know how quickly the cold creeps in. The Earth Lodge solved that problem centuries ago. Families could gather around a modest fire, and the heat didn't vanish into the night air. It stayed locked inside those dirt-packed walls. Modern builders pay thousands of dollars for insulated panels and high-tech materials. But this was insulation you didn't have to buy at Home Depot. It was free, abundant, and it worked. That's why entire communities could survive brutal winters with far less firewood than you'd ever imagine. It wasn't brute force, it was smart engineering, ancient survival wisdom perfectly in tune with the environment. Hack number two is the central fire pit and the smoke hole above it. At first glance, it looks simple, dig a pit light, a fire let the smoke rise. But the design was far more clever than that. The fire pit was sunken just enough to create a stable burn, while the smoke hole in the roof worked like a primitive draft control system. Together they managed airflow so that heat stayed in the living space and smoke had a clean path out. If you've ever sat by a campfire in a canvas tent, you know the battle too much smoke inside or too much heat escaping through ventilation. The Earth Lodge solved both problems centuries ago. The warm air rose carrying smoke toward the hole while the heavy earthen roof slowed the draft so heat didn't get sucked out with it. That balance, airflow, and smoke management was engineering at its best. In modern survival, we chase the same goal. A rocket stove uses draft to burn hot and clean, and a chimney is designed to pull smoke out without wasting heat. The Earth Lodge was working on the same principle. 
Think of it as an early rocket stove combined with passive ventilation. It gave families warmth without choking them in smoke, and it did it with nothing but wood grass and dirt. That's ancient wisdom beating shortcuts. No gadgets, no fans, no stainless steel chimney kits, just airflow managed with precision. The result steady heat, clean air, and survival in sub-zero winters. Smart design centuries before we had the words HVAC or rocket stove. Hack number three, raise sleeping platforms. If you've ever spent a night in a canvas tent on frozen ground, you know exactly where the cold creeps in first. It comes from beneath you, soaking through your blanket, your sleeping bag, even your bones. The tribes of the Northern Plains solved that problem with simple engineering, raised beds built right into the walls of the Earth Lodge. These platforms, often lined with hides and grass, lifted families off the frozen soil by two or three feet. That distance made all the difference. It cut off the cold sink at ground level and kept sleepers in the warm air layer closer to the fire pit. In survival terms, this was insulation layering for the body itself, a buffer zone between man and earth. If you've built a raised bed in a bushcraft shelter, you know how powerful that small change can be. Suddenly you go from shivering all night to actually resting. Modern campers pay hundreds of dollars for insulated sleeping pads and cots. But the principle is the same. Keep yourself off the cold ground and you hold on to heat. The Native Americans weren't guessing. They understood draft control and airflow. Warm air rises, cold air sinks. By sleeping higher, they lived inside the warm pocket. Simple physics applied centuries before we had the textbooks to explain it. Raised platforms also doubled as storage seating, even work surfaces. It was multifunctional survival design, the kind of thinking any bushcrafter admires. Ancient wisdom once again outsmarting modern shortcuts. And when the blizzards came, that small elevation, just a couple of feet, often meant the difference between misery and comfort between surviving the night or not. Hack number four. Roof insulation and animal hides. When the wind howled across the plains and the snow piled up, the roof of the Earth Lodge wasn't just a cover overhead. It was a carefully layered system of insulation. Massive beams carried a framework of poles, and on top of that came thick mats of grass reeds and brush. Then a heavy layer of earth was packed down to seal it tight. In the coldest months, extra hides were stretched over the roof or hung inside as liners adding another barrier against heat loss. That layering worked exactly the way a double sleeping bag or a reflective blanket works today. Each layer trapped air, slowed convection, and kept warmth inside. Think about it like insulation layering in bushcraft shelters, stacking natural materials to create pockets of still air. The more layers, the harder it was for heat to escape. If you've ever wrapped yourself in two sleeping bags or added a reflective emergency blanket inside, you've felt that same principle in action. This wasn't guesswork. The tribes understood airflow and draft control. They knew that a well-insulated roof was as important as a solid fire pit. Without it, heat would rise straight out wasted into the night sky. With it, the earth lodge could stay warm with a fraction of the firewood. That's efficient heating centuries before modern energy codes or fiberglass insulation. Roof insulation and hides turned a simple shelter into a winter fortress. It's ancient wisdom, the kind that bushcrafters and survivalists still rely on. No fiberglass rolls, no reflective tarps from the gear store, just grass soil and hides layered with purpose. Proof that sometimes the smartest solutions are the oldest ones. Hack number five, door placement and draft control. At first, a door seems like a simple detail. You cut an opening and that's it. But in the Earth Lodge, the door was one of the most important parts of the design. It was deliberately low and usually faced south, away from the punishing north winds that sweep across the plains. That wasn't just convenience. It was survival engineering. By keeping the entryway low, Families forced cold air to settle in a kind of cold sink near the floor instead of spilling across the sleeping platforms. 
Anyone who's built a survival shelter in winter knows the same principle. Dig a cold sink trench in your snow cave or debris hut, and the cold air drops into that pocket, leaving the higher sleeping ledge warmer. The tribes applied that same idea centuries earlier with nothing more than earth and timber. The south-facing orientation was another layer of draft control. It reduced exposure to the north winds and took advantage of the occasional winter sun. That smart site selection, the kind bushcrafters still preach today, place your shelter with wind and sun in mind, and you conserve energy every night. You sleep in it. Compare that to modern homes. We spend thousands on weather-stripping storm doors and double-pane glass to manage drafts. The Earth Lodge achieved draft control with placement elevation and simple physics. No hardware store, no modern sealants, just good design. Once again, ancient wisdom beats modern shortcuts. By lowering a doorway and facing it south, Native Americans created a natural draft system that kept their shelters warmer, safer, and more efficient. It's proof that survival isn't just about firewood. It's about airflow insulation layering and understanding how nature itself works. Now let's put these ideas to the test. Imagine stepping outside into a night that's 10 below zero. The snow crunches under your boots and the air steals your breath. A thermometer planted outside reads 10 degrees. But inside the Earth Lodge, another thermometer tells a very different story. 50, sometimes 60 degrees Fahrenheit. That's the difference between misery and comfort, between frostbite and a full night's rest. The secret wasn't brute force, it was engineering. Thermal mass walls held the heat. The central fire pit and smoke hole controlled airflow, raised sleeping platforms, kept bodies off the cold sink near the ground, and layered roofs of earth, and hides sealed it all in. Every piece worked together as a survival system. Now compare that to a canvas tent. You light a fire or run a stove, and within minutes, the warmth escapes through the thin walls. Draft control is nearly impossible, and the cold creeps back in as soon as the flames die. Anyone who's winter camped knows that sinking feeling when the ground radiates cold through your sleeping bag. The Native Americans had solved that problem long before insulation foam or reflective liners existed. In bushcraft today, we fight the same enemy cold air sinking and heat loss. They mastered it centuries ago with nothing but soil wood and hides. Modern passive houses and rocket stoves echo the same principles, thermal mass, insulation layering, smoke management, airflow control. The difference is they didn't have blueprints or hardware stores, just wisdom observation and practical design. It's proof that ancient knowledge isn't primitive. It's timeless. And in many ways, it still outperforms modern shortcuts. Let's clear up a common misconception. People sometimes look at an earth lodge and say, that's just a mud hut. But it wasn't. It was engineered. Every detail door placement, thermal mass walls, airflow through the smoke hole, raised sleeping platforms, insulation layering with grass and hides was part of an intentional design. This wasn't trial and error. It was practical science born from centuries of observation. Think about it. A modern passive house follows the same principles. Seal the drafts, insulate the roof, manage airflow, and use thermal mass to hold the heat. The tribes of the plains did all of that without blueprints or insulation foam. If you've ever camped in a canvas tent in the winter, you know the cold creeping in from the ground and the walls. They solved that problem centuries ago with nothing but natural materials. Ancient wisdom beats modern shortcuts every time. So what can we take away from the Earth Lodge? This wasn't just shelter, it was engineering, ancient engineering that turned timber soil and hides into a survival system. Thermal mass walls, draft control at the doorway airflow through the smoke hole insulation layering in the roof, and raised beds off the cold sink, they all worked together like gears in a machine. And they kept whole communities alive through winters that would break most modern campers in a matter of days. In bushcraft, in survival, we often look for gear, another stove, another layer of foam, another high-tech sleeping bag. But the lesson here is clear. 
Sometimes the smartest solutions come from working with nature, not against it. Ancient wisdom beats modern shortcuts. If you want to see how Native Americans manage the same trick in tapis, watch this next video. Their airflow design rivals modern HVAC and it might just change how you think about winter survival.